If you've never done it before, the idea of balancing a gimbal like this Weevil S can be really daunting. However, it's actually surprisingly easy and intuitive, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. When you first pull it out of your bag, it's probably locked up like this. So you're going to want to unlock it and open everything up into the position you would use to actually put a camera on it. So when you're done, you want it to look like this. This is how it's going to be when you put the camera on it and actually are using it. Then you're going to take your camera with the mounting plate attached to the bottom and you're going to slide it right onto this portion here. Now once you have it on there, it's going to be pretty loose, so you want to be careful not to drop it. Now ideally the best way to do this is to fold this out and set this on a table so you have a stable surface to work with. But that doesn't work for this video, so I'm just going to hold it. Basically what you're going to do is unlock each of the three axes one at a time, balance it accordingly, and then lock the camera into place so it's generally stable. The goal that you're shooting for is that the camera is balanced when you're holding it naturally so that the motors don't have to do as much work to compensate. Now, for example, if all the weight of the camera is leaning forward, the motor that's pulling it back up has to do extra work all the time and you wind up chewing through batteries really quickly. So the more balanced your camera, the longer your batteries are gonna last. There's a big train in the background, of course. Just gonna sit here and wait for the train. amazing how long trains can be. Still going. Got me kidding. All right, let's try this again. Once you have all three axes in the active locked position and you have the camera mounted on it, the next step is going to be balancing it one axis at a time. To do that, you're going to unlock the one axis, then you're going to move the camera around until it's balanced about right, and then lock it into place. We're going to start with the forward and backward axis. So we're going to unlock this right here, and you'll see the camera swings back and forth. So I'm going to adjust it until it is about stable, right about there. And then I'm going to flip the switch that locks that axis into place. So you can see now it's sitting pretty. So I'm going to lock that axis and move on to the second axis. Now you see when I unlock that one, the camera lurches to the side. That's because it's sliding from side to side here. So I'm going to move side to side. Wait till it's balanced just about right. And then flip the switch on that axis. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. If it's not 100% balanced, that's fine. The gimbal's gonna work fine, and your footage will be great. It just optimizes it. The closer you get to perfect, the more optimal it's gonna be, but don't feel bad if it's not 100% right on the mark. So to do that one, I unlock the first two axes. I don't know if you have to do that, but that's how I do it. And then I tilt it forward like this. And when I unlock this axis, basically what I'm hoping for is that the camera doesn't swing back and forth while balancing on here. If it does, you can slide this back and forth to adjust it accordingly. Right now, mine's pr pretty well balanced, but you would just loosen this, slide it back and forth, lock it into place, and what you want is that it's pretty stable when you tilt it like this. I believe that's pretty accurate, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Now, it's important to note you do all this while the gimbal's powered off, otherwise the motors are going to be trying to compensate while you're doing stuff. So, once it's balanced, then you can turn it on. and you'll see it kicks right into place, and it's moving very effectively. So that's how you balance a gimbal. It's not particularly complicated, and once you get into it, you'll find it's actually very intuitive.